Hello and welcome to all, from the ban on wearing high heels in and around ancient Greek monuments to the Scottish law that opens your toilet to strangers, not to mention the ban on climbing trees and lampposts in Toronto. Here are the 10 strangest and most outlandish laws in the world. Let's get started! Thanks to its prestigious ancient past, Greece is home to some of the most fabulous monuments of human architecture, such as the Acropolis of Athens or the famous Temple of Hephaestus. But if you want to immerse yourself in a Hellenic epic worthy of the Odyssey or the Iliad, you will first have to be equipped for the occasion, because if you have the misfortune to wear high heels, you cannot walk on the precious ground of these historical monuments. Indeed, in Greece it is strictly forbidden to wear shoes or boots with heels inside these architectural wonders of yesteryear. Because you can imagine that the parquet floor becomes very fragile after a few millenniums, and to treat on ancient mosaics out of price with high heels is not a very good idea. This law is not the only one to be strictly applied in Greece, because there is another one which formally forbids any food or drink inside the monuments, where even chewing gum is forbidden. Who among us has never climbed a tree as a child or swung on its branches like Mowgli? Of course we are not all jungle children and some of us probably lived in places where this kind of activity was not too tolerated, if you can say it like that. In Toronto, for example, one of the most beautiful cities in Canada and certainly the most populated, it is literally illegal to attempt to climb a tree. It is indeed a real crime punished by the law and can bring you very expensive fines. The bill can be as high as $365 if you are caught in the act, as was the case recently for a young man who was caught climbing a conifer in Bellevue Park in Kensington Market. This rather unusual law, which is certainly hated by the little Torontonians, is not the only one that appears in the municipal code of the Canadian megalopolis. Indeed, the poor kids are not even allowed to play with snow in the city parks, so no more snowball fights between friends. When summer arrives and the atmosphere blossoms with sea air and tanning creams. But of course, beach vacations could be nothing without these good old sandcastles we built with the know-how of a Vauban and the admirable seal of our youth. However, you should know that on some beaches it is strictly forbidden to build sandcastles, under penalty of being fined very dissuasive. In Mallorca, for example, it is strictly forbidden to build palaces or forts of any kind out of sand, and any offender can be fined 100 euros, but you should know that Mallorca Mallorca is not really the only Spanish city where such unusual laws reign, because in Galicia and on the island of Tenerife too, the Gestapo of the beaches is watching over the grain. Even worse, because there the fines for building a sandcastle can go up to 1500 euros, enough to put you off this cute little summer hobby forever. The legislators behind these laws, abhorred by tourists, justify them with a rather valid argument, since they were put in place to guarantee the absence of any obstacle on the beach that could hinder rescue teams and lifeguards in case of vital emergency. In the heat of the action, the latter could indeed stumble on the sand constructions or even fall in the holes dug by the children, which would indeed be a very unfortunate incident. Welcome to Switzerland, the land of cuckoo clocks and delicious alpine milk chocolate. But beware, because in the Swiss Confederation there are some laws that are, to say the least, bizarre and for which there is no logical explanation. Let's take a look at this absurd law which formally forbids you to mow your lawn on Sundays. This law exists in many Swiss municipalities, which probably adopted at a time when the principle of soundproofing did not yet exist, or was only in its infancy. Still, in some places in Switzerland it is still forbidden to flush the toilet after 10 pm. So yes, we don't want to disturb the neighbors at late hours, but what if we have an urgent need, or if we had dinner with Indian takeaway food? If you want to take a little pig as a pet in France, avoid choosing a name with Bonapartian sounds. Indeed, beware if you name your baby pig 
Napoleon, because France may not be an empire anymore, but some imperial laws are still in force. This ridiculous law probably originates from the time of Napoleon's splendor and the apogee of the empire of the small but great men. It must be said that the emperor was a bit sensitive about his reputation and associating his first name with such a dirty and abject animal would have seemed to him a literally blasphemous act towards his person. But if you want to give a royal name to your adorable little piggy without risking to break the law, you can nevertheless name him Louis XVI or even Charlemagne. And if it's a sow, why not call her Elizabeth II? French justice is often cited as an example in the world, in order to illustrate the intelligence and impartiality of its institutions. But as for any human initiative, it has however its little lot of ineptitudes and completely crazy laws. Let's mention this law, which simply forbids you to take pictures of the Eiffel Tower as soon as it gets dark. If this law seems to you totally insane and without any legal basis or even that it is not even real, well, you are mistaken. Indeed, this law does exist in Paris and implies that no picture of the old steel monument should be taken at night under penalty of fines or even a lawsuit in due form. But let tourists be reassured from the start, because if this law is well registered in the judicial annals of the City of Light, it concerns in truth only the companies and the societies. These last ones must indeed pay beforehand of an authorization to be able to use the night and a illuminated image of the Eiffel Tower, because these garlands and these lights are precisely protected by royalties, so you can take as many selfies with the tower, no one will hold it against you. But beware of vertigo attacks. Scotland is more famous for its haggies and its highlands than for its unusual laws. Nevertheless, your friend World Revealed has managed to find a good old dusty and totally archaic law, but which is still in use today. Indeed, in this ancestral Celtic nation, the sense of hospitality must have been held in a very high esteem, as demonstrated by this old law, which obligates you to provide access to the toilets of your house to complete strangers. Yes, you heard right. In the land of Highlander, if someone knocks on your door and asks to use your toilet for a small or large errand, you have no right to refuse him. The origin of this unusual law is mysterious and no one can even tell you exactly when it came into being. However, this law which deserves the golden palm of absurdity is still in force in Scotland. One might be tempted to say that the American criminal justice system remains one of the most effective and dissuasive in the world, since it has succeeded in maintaining a certain social cohesion in the United States. And thanks to the magic of Hollywood, the American courts and their judicial procedures have no secret for us anymore. But objection, your honor, because when it comes to absurd laws, the United States is not lacking in inspiration and practically every American state has its own legal nonsense. Connecticut, for example, is one of the richest states in the United States and is also home to cultural hotspots such as the prestigious Yale University. Its panel and judicial system is also one of the most tolerant in the country, as it is one of the few American states to have abolished the death penalty. But Connecticut also has some totally aberrant laws that would be better suited to a joke book than a real law book. For example, in this beautiful state, you are not allowed to train docks in certain places, like in the city of Hartford. But it gets worse, because in Connecticut, you are not even allowed to kiss your own wife on Sundays. We really don't know who was behind such a bizarre law, but you'd think it was created by a husband who hates kissing his significant other. We'll always stay in the land of the free because you'll see that the United States has compiled a lot of absurd and literally surreal laws. In Asheville, North Carolina, for example, you should cover up well in summer and winter so you don't catch cold. Because if you ever sneeze in public in the street, you should know that you are likely to get a fine if a police officer officer passes by. Yes, it does. This law does exist, even if it seems unimaginable to you. And it is even written 
in the city's panel code. We can't tell you by whom it was first adopted, nor when it was adopted by the state, but we know that it starts with the good intention of not contaminating others if you are sick. Still, you won't be very happy if someone makes you pay a small fortune for not being able to repress a thunderous sneeze, will you? Especially if it's just a simple seasonal allergy due to pollen. And of course, as usual, your friendly friend, World Revealed, has saved the best for last, with this law so absurd that you may tear your hair out. You should know that in this vast territory of Alabama, it is strictly forbidden to put salt on a railroad track, at the risk of incurring the death penalty. This law may seem totally surreal and without any logical basis, but you can imagine that in Alabama, it was adopted for a very precise reason. Indeed, in the days of the Wild West and its valiant lone cowboys, this state was considered a cattle paradise, with thousands of herds grazing peacefully in its vast green prairies. And to protect the wealthy ranchers, state law required that any damage done to an animal had to be fully reimbursed, which also included animals hit by trains. The railroad company had to pay the market value of the crushed cow or calf to its legal owner. This led some unscrupulous breeders to set up a scam that was, to say the least, Machiavellian, and that would prove to be very lucrative. Indeed, these farmers did not hesitate to attract their sick or dying cows on the railroad tracks by sprinkling a little salt on the rails. The animals, which loved to lick this condiment, rushed to the railroad tracks to have a salty feast, and then the train arrives tiredly and inexorably to put an end to their existence. The railroad company will thus reimburse the full price of the struck beast, even though its market value was significantly diminished, if not virtually nil. And since no one could prove the health of the cow afterwards, this law was introduced in order to dissuade the breeders from practicing this diabolical scam. And that's it for today. What do you think of these 10 totally absurd and unusual laws around the world? Which one of them impressed you the most? Tell us in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to put a like and subscribe and activate the notifications. See you soon for new discoveries out of the ordinary.